Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello, hi. Uh, this is the Ride or Die makeup tag, makeup tutorial, makeup look. If you haven't heard of the Ride or Die makeup tag, Jacqueline Hill basically created it a couple of weeks ago, I believe, where she basically talked through all of her Ride or Die makeup products and I uh, I thought it was a really good idea, however I kind of wanted to do more than just talk about the products that are my ride or die so to speak. So I was on Twitter last night I believe and I was scrolling down and I saw Kathleen Lights talking about the ride or die makeup tag and how she wanted to do a ride or die makeup tutorial and I thought it was a really good idea. So. I'm not saying that I have created this at all. I thought it was a brilliant idea. If Kathleen Light's video is up by the time this goes live, then obviously I will link it down below. I'll, do, I'll link her channel anyway, so you guys can see it when um, she puts it up. Obviously, I'm sure you guys will have heard of her because she's huge and I am tiny. Just to show you guys an actual makeup look using my Ride or Dies. So for me, a Ride or Die makeup product is something that you know and love and will constantly go back to, constantly use um, when you're trying out new products and it's just not doing what it needs to do. They're, these are the products that you go back to they are your ride and die, they are your biggest loves um, and the products that you always recommend to people. They're basically just your favourite products of all time really. That's what I've done today, I have created this makeup look using my all time favourite makeup products and I have also shown you my all time favourite makeup look as well, so it's both my ride or die products and my ride or die techniques and ways of doing things. So it's just everything ride or die. If you would like to see this face created with these products, then go ahead and just keep on watching and I'll see you in a second. So ride or die primer. I'm gonna use this Nivea uh, Poe Shade Balm because I am still yet to find my all time, a primer that I love no matter what. I just, I don't know what it is, I still, after all these years, I've not got a primer that I will constantly just completely love. The Nivea one is ride or die in the sense that whenever a new primer that I try isn't working out for me and I need a primer, I will reach for my post shave balm. So I guess in that sense it is my ride or die because this is the one that I will always reach for. Concealer is such a given for me. My collection Lasting Perfection Concealer, all time favorite. I've got mine in the number one fair. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite concealer. I've got such great coverage and it's drugstore. It's so cheap. It's less than five pounds and it's such a great concealer pat that all in. My foundation, this is such a given, Estee Lauder Double Wear. I will never not love this foundation, ever. It has been such a long time love of mine. I've gone through so many pots of this because it's just the best foundation I have ever used for how it looks on my skin. The only thing that isn't ride or die about this is photography. You cannot wear this and take flash photos because it's got SPF in it and it just gives you the worst flashback in the world. Absolute ride or die for highlighting is my MAC Select cover up. This is in the number NW15 and I use it super light to get that highlighting because I just love a super light, super bright under eye and this is great for that. This is such a good concealer because it doesn't give you too much cakey coverage, it really gives you just enough to be that brightening effect but not enough to 
give you a cake face. Now we're gonna do some cream contour and my favorite thing for cream contour is the LA Girl Pro Concealer. I haven't actually had this very long. However, it has been giving me the best bronze and kind of contour, but more bronze I would say, that I have ever found with a cream product like this. And it's so cheap as well, it's ridiculous. You do have to use it very, very sparingly though. A tiny little bit does go a very, very long way. That is something to bear in mind. But it's a really, really good product. So I'd probably say that this is going to be a ride or die for me. Moving on to cream highlight, it Topshop Glow Pot in Polished. I use this in almost all of my tutorials when I use a, a liquid highlight as well as my normal powder highlight. This just gives you the most gorgeous golden iridescent highlight and it just intensifies your highlight so much and I always like just patting it on with my fingers. I think that gives it the most blended look and I always like to bring it up just around the back of my eyebrows just to get that real sort of sun-kissed glow. Ooh. So now we're going to start setting these things in place. The first I'm going to do is set my highlight and I'm going to use my favourite highlight of all time. This is my Kiko eyeshadow in 208. Perfect thing about Kiko is that it does not break the bank. This was £8.90. Um, moving on to the under eye area. I My absolute ride or die for the under eye area is of course my Laura Mercier secret brightening powder. I don't think I will ever put this down. It's just my absolute favourite. I take it on a beauty blender. This isn't a damp beauty blender and I just press it under the eyes there because I do get problems with creasing. I just press it up under there. And I also find that this helps add to the brightness under my eyes as well. Benefit Hula, my all time favourite bronzer. Great for bronzing and also pretty damn good for contouring as well because it's matte firstly, which is what you want. And also it's not too cool toned, but it's not too warm toned either. So I tend to use it as a bronzer mostly. I will regularly go without using blushes. However, when I do want to use a blush, I will always reach for my Peaches Blush by MAC because this works really well with my skin tone and it's not super intense. It doesn't give you those super pink rosy cheeks which is obviously what I try and avoid from my KP. My Urban Decay All Nighter Primer. This is in the original because I didn't want the primers that gave me the like shimmery or anything just in case I was going for a matte look. So this is just wonderful for keeping your eyeshadow perfectly pigmented but also making sure that it doesn't crease throughout the day and evening. So I just pop that on and then I normally set it in place so I just take my Rimmel setting powder, really any powder Normally I will use my Laura Mercier if it's still out but I just put it away. So I'll just take anything and set it in place just because it's easier to blend eyeshadows when they are on powder than when they're on a sticky mess. Anastasia Beverly Hills is my favourite brand for brows, dip brow pomade and this is my favourite. And I'm just taking this on a little crown brush. It's the C160-1-16. I have got so many favourite eyeshadows. So what I thought I would do is show you my ride or die 
eyeshadow look with the eyeshadows that I always use to create that look. Morph 35N palette. I have had this palette. It's so well loved. The shadow I'm going to use is this one. I'm really just using this as a very, very light skin tone transition shade. And I'm using this on a Sigma... Why have we got cotton wool on it? Sigma E40 blending brush. You just want to basically layer as much as possible. So that's going to give you as much dimension on the eyes as possible. So it's not just one shadow blended. We've got lots and lots of different um, shadows and lots of different definitions on the eye. My complete favourite look is just a warm, neutral, smoky eye, um, but with browns instead of blacks. I'm not a fan of black smoky eyes really. It just reminds me of when I was 16 and making terrible makeup choices. I don't like black and silver or grey smoky eyes. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. One, right here. This is a slightly deeper but also very warm shadow. So we're again just going to pop that in the crease um, just to keep warming it up and just keep adding those layers of dimension. Is this a 217? MAC 217. This shade right here and start building up a little bit of definition. So it does require a little bit more patience but I promise it gets you a way better look in the end. Shadow right here which is a, it's not a black, it's a super dark brown shadow that is super pigmented um, and we're just going to concentrate this on a slightly smaller brush into the outer corner. My MAC Tan Pigment, press and slightly swipe on the inner half and then what I like to do is just sort of dab on the middle section, 217, and blend these just so there's a really nice transition between the two and on the outer V just to keep up with those pigments and make sure that we don't lose that outer corner definition. 17, 217 with nothing on the brush. Just blending this line. This is probably my all time favorite shadow in this palette because it's such a beautiful deep warm plummy shadow. After I have finished off my lid shadow, I always do my inner corner highlight and for that I love using my Sleek Solstice palette because these are so flipping pigmented. I will often use these as a highlight but I love using these for the inner corner. This is my Wet n Wild Mega Liner. This has been my favourite liner ever since I moved to America in 2014. So I've loved this for two years. I found this when I was over there, obviously, and I fell in love with it because it's so cheap and also the amount of pigmentation and how matte it is is just such a dream to me. And I bought so many of them home with me and then I ran out of them about three months ago. That was a really sad day because I just love it so much. Um, but I'm going to use the dark brown one for the sake of this video just to show you guys how much I love it. So along with this eye look, I always love doing a wing. Bride or Die lashes have got to be my Aubrey lashes from Demure Lashes. They just Ugh, oh, they're just the most flattering lashes you will ever see. They're gorgeous. I love them. My mascara, which is the L'Oreal Telescopic. I've been using the L'Oreal Telescopic since before I even started YouTube. And I would actually say, alongside my Telescopic, my other, one of my other absolute favourite um, mascaras, I don't know where it is right now, it's somewhere on here, is the Ico Black Magic Mascara. I go back in and I always take this super warm shadow on my MAC 219 pencil brush and I run this along the outer two thirds of my lower lash line. I never bring it all the way into the centre of the eye, I like to keep that nice and bright. This shadow next to it 
this one right here so this super warm orangey one and I will just smoke it out just below it a little bit I love smoking out my lower lash line with warm colours because it's so flattering with green eyes absolute ride or die lip liner is my boldly bare line my lips with it and then I also fill them in I also find that when I fill them in with the liner it helps the longevity of whatever I put on top of it as well it's so difficult to narrow down to a favorite lipstick I would say collectively my favorite type of lipstick my favorite ride or die color of lipstick would be a good old-fashioned pinky nude with a slight coral undertone um, and Honey Love by MAC is one of my all-time favorites I am a gloss girl at heart though I love me a good again nudie gloss um, and my ride or die glosses are my NYX butter glosses I love them they're not sticky um, they're so flattery and again super cheap so one of my two favorites are this one which is vanilla cream pie and also my favorite one is creme brulee but I cannot find it for the life of me and blend the lashes with my real lashes and then we're done again ride or die setting spray mac fix plus i just bathe my entire life in it oh and i also popped a little bit of mascara on my lower lashes whilst i was waiting for my camera there that is the end of my ride or die makeup look I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you enjoyed it a little bit more than potentially me just sat talking you through my face. Instead, you guys got to see exactly what I do for a ride or die face using all of my ride or die products. Again, I'm not taking any credit for creating this video. I just wanted to jump on the bandwagon of the ride or die tag makeup look situation. I thought it was a really good idea. Find all my social media links in the description. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Holy mother of Moses, it is flipping warm in here.